Hi, friends of golfers, Eric Schulberg, EJS Golf Academy. So a question I get asked online a lot is, so what are the golf lessons like with you? Okay, so obviously I have two branches. I have the online and in-person, okay? There's a lot of overlap in the way I teach, obviously, okay? Um, I would say if you look at, let's just talk about how I, how I look at golf. And a lot of this you can you know find throughout YouTube and Instagram of what I talk about. Um, that's how I meet a lot of different people who find me in those places and you know want to either come see me or work online. Um, so it, it, first thing I'm gonna do either way is look at your swing and evaluate it, okay? Now, if in, in person I get to do it with you seeing right there, uh, the other way is online. I'm gonna do it with you through Zoom. And we're gonna look at it. I'm gonna be using my OnForm app to be dissecting it and maybe even using Sportsbox 3D to look at it from a bunch of different angles, okay? So look at it, dissect it. Now, I wanna know your goals, right? So my goal as a coach isn't to just look at a golf swing and go, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. I don't look at it that way. I, I try to find what's working in your golf swing and then say, okay, what is this? What are your goals? Okay. So, you know, if somebody has high goals, um, one of my students that wants to play college golf or um, pro golfer that I teach right now, pro golfer. So that's, that's different. I mean, I know what their goals are. So, but somebody who's say a weekend warrior and they're like, you know what? I just, I want to stop slicing this golf ball. That's all I want to do is I got to stop slicing this. I just, it's so out of control. So it tells me a little about what I need to do with their golf swing. Am I going to worry about every single thing in their golf swing that they do wrong? No, because, and they, they may have told me already, Eric, I, I don't have much time to work on this. And, and, and it's really, I'm just a weekend warrior with it. I just, I feel like I'm a pretty good athlete. I just want to learn how to quit doing it, quit hooking it, or I mean, slicing it so bad. So that gives me a frame of reference of what to do and what I'm going to work on. So I'm not going to sit there and go, boy, you do this, this wrong. You do this wrong. You do this wrong. You do this wrong. I'm going to find out why they slice the golf ball and then go for the fix of that. Okay. So typically like I know why most people slice. I mean, when you know that, when you know the properties of what happens down here, when you make, when you hit the ball, when you understand those golf becomes to me a lot easier. Okay. And this isn't a, something just a coach to know. I have all my students learn this because when you're on the golf course and you hit a shot um, and let's just say I hit one, that kind of fades a little bit off my target line. And let's say it started on the target line, it fades, which I'm looking at one exactly right here doing that. So my club path was a 2.0. Now I could do this without picking nine numbers may not be exact, but I know with my club path being a 2.0, meaning I slang a little bit into out. Um, I know that for that ball to curve right off of that, I have to have a face angle that's open to that path. Okay. So in order for me to fade, that's what happens. Now, so let's say this guy's ball starts way to the left and then fades, okay? So then I still know that this guy's club face is open to it, but since I know that the ball starts wherever the, uh, pretty much wherever the club face is pointed, I know that I have somebody who swings something probably like this, and then they just can't get their club face square. You know, something probably like that, that the club face is a negative four, <laughs> right? And I have my club path at negative seven and my face angle at negative four. So once again, I faded it, right? Because my face angle is over my path, okay? So it's outside of my club path, okay? Now, so if this person wants to stop doing that, they, they have two options, or basically one option. They have to get this club face more closed, okay? So they have to learn to get this club face like this more closed, which they're probably just trying to do this to it and teach them how to put these torques and stuff into the shaft so they can therefore close it, knuckles to the ground, I'll talk to them about, and then they'll straighten their shot, straighten their shot out. And they'll even start, if they're an over the top swing like this, once they see the shot straighten out to just a straight left pull, then they'll start swinging a little more right because then they'll know that that's um, what they need to do to get out of it. But, you know, I didn't hit that good there at all, um, but because I tried to come so inside out but I can still see that my, my um, I, that would have been a big, big draw right there because I had a five path and a face, which was like a two or no one. Okay. So it would have been started low right target and drew back probably a little bit left of the pin. Okay. So that's how I go about looking at it. I look at what is the person going to do for work? How much work are they going to put into it? If I get a hard worker, then we're going to break down a lot of things. And here's the thing though. I tell everybody, you're not going to get worse 
at your golf game when you're playing with when you're working with me. Nobody gets worse, okay? Because of this, I put a lot of value in scoring, okay? Meaning, it's an art. Just hitting this ball good is an art too, yes, but we also have to score well. So there's a lot of days things aren't working. What are you gonna do that day? Are you gonna score or do you have to hit, reel the ball really good to shoot well? You shouldn't have to. You should be able to, like Tiger said, have your B or C game and still shoot a good score for you, okay? That is just making good choices and learning how to manage your game and understanding what's happening here. If I have a day uh, out there and I'm, as your coach, telling you, and, and you now you understand these properties of what the ball is doing, and let's say you got the slice again. What I'll tell you is if you cannot get this club slice closed while you're out there like that, well, then start setting open that day. Set wide open to the left and then just play that slice for the day just to get through the day, okay? And then when you get home, Start working on what do I got to do to get here with the club face more like this instead of like this if you're slicing, it's going to be wide open. But more like this, more matching the back angle so you can come in, rotate, and get a nice shot like that. But we have to get through the round. And if for some reason the person just cannot get this feeling down of closing the shaft down like this, the face down through the shaft, then I'm going to tell them, go ahead and just for that day, I'll just play it because there's an art, there's an art in that too, right? So just there, that little shot. I played a nice, you know, little cut because I know what to do. I know my path, my path was negative eight and my face was five. So that little fade, right? Well, pretty good fade right back on my target. Okay. So you do what you have to do when you're out there and that's part of learning. But depending on how you want to go about how good you want to go at this game is that's how I'm going to decide. I will say this, my players that get really good, I don't ask them to put in more than 15 to 20 minutes a day. Now, that 15, 20 minutes a day is not easy work. I don't just have you stand here hitting balls over and over and over. There'll never be two balls in a row. You're always doing something in between. But let's just say we're working on takeaway. You know, you'll do a bunch of drills with something here to give you feedback so you know if you're doing it right, okay? There's always gonna be a feedback. So let's just use the takeaway, for example, as the issue. Let's say we need to start with a takeaway for somebody. You'll spend doing 25 to 50 reps of this morning to night. I start right here, now it's on me, and here, keep it on my body. So I learned to take the club away with my body. But see how I have something that tells me if I'm doing it right, I'll never be guessing, okay? And that's the thing, never guessing. So let's say the next step is after we have that, we'll work on getting this thing pointed on the, on the line like this. So once again, we have something to tell us if we're doing it correct. I have a mirror in front of me to tell me if I came off the ball, I've already been working on rotational drills, so I've learned to rotate my body well. So hopefully you can see my point of what I'm getting at here. You're always going to have a way to tell if you're doing it right. Feedback and drills, and you'll get to where you want. This will creep into your golf swing in your game. Working this stuff, okay? Let me know if you have any questions. Appreciate you watching Eric Solberg, EGS Golf Academy.